to invite up some help today to help me talk about the intelligent future. <laughs> On my left, we have Leah. Leah is an espresso aficionado. She's a huge fantasy novel fan, and she's also a gigantic Metallica fan. Hey Google, wer ist der Schlagzeuger von Metallica? Der Schlagzeuger von Metallica ist Lars Ulrich. Leah is a consumer of the intelligent future. For 20 years, the web was the centerpiece of every digital experience fueled by blue links on a search engine results page. But today, Leah didn't get a web result. She got a single answer. Now, speaking of single, Leah is single. <laughs> And so, by the way, is Tim. Now, you may have noticed that Tim is American. He is a espresso aficionado. He is a big fantasy novel enthusiast, and he is also a huge Metallica fan. In fact, such a big Metallica fan that he's willing to travel anywhere in the world for the next concert. Yeah! I'm going to search on Google for the next Metallica concert. All right, it looks like the next show is at the Barclay Card Arena in Hamburg. Hey Google, where's the Barclay Card Arena? The address for Barclay Card Arena Hamburg is Barclay Card Arena Hamburg, Sylvester Alley 10, 22525 Hamburg, Germany. Awesome. And how many people can fit in the Barclay Card Arena? 16,000. Tim, too, is a consumer of the intelligent future. He asks questions, he gets answers. There are no web results. This shift to single answers is becoming extreme. Leah has some friends in London. Now, it's getting kind of late and she wants to call them, but she can't remember if daylight savings has kicked in there or not. What time is it in London? Ich suche nach Zeit in London. Cool, sieht aus, als wäre dort noch keine Sommerzeit. Now, take a look at this result. There are no blue links here at all. You can't possibly click through to a website. This is an experiment that Google ran all last week. Meine Damen und Herren, we are witnessing a major platform shift. The rise of AI-powered services. Gone are blue links, web pages of strings, replaced by smart answers made up of things. Intelligent services take knowledge, apply complex algorithms to it, and surface it to the world in a user interface for you to interact with. Together, these three parts make up the anatomy of an intelligent service. Now, I want to deep dive into UI for a minute. In the past 20 years, we've seen extraordinary advancements in user interface in areas like voice search, for example, which now makes up 20% of all queries on a mobile phone, and 28% of Germans say that they regularly use voice search. Voice search is also happening in the home. If you use your Amazon Alexa, you ask questions, you get answers. There's no screen there at all. There's no web results there at all. Google Assistant gives you a conversational UI. It has a screen, but it delivers its answers in the form of maps, knowledge cards, and other types of snippets. There's been a lot of talk about the, the speaker wars, whether Apple's new HomePod or Amazon Alexa or Google Home is going to be the big winner. But I actually am not sure that that's the right question. It actually reminds me of the browser wars in the late 90s. Netscape took off. Microsoft bundled IE into Windows. Google launched Chrome. Firefox launched. Safari was launched by Apple. The big tech companies all scrambled to control the browser, but it turned out that nobody even cared about the browser. The browser is just, it's a vehicle. When you're using Safari to access Google, you don't think you're using Safari, you think you're using Google. The same thing is going to happen in the speaker wars. You're not going to care what speaker you use. The speaker is just a browser. You're going to use the services that have the best algorithms, which is the second layer of an intelligent service. Remember, Leah is a big fantasy novel fan, and the first step of the algorithm is to get the intent. Alexa, where is Harry Potter? 
Harry James Potter ist die Hauptfigur der Harry Potter Reihe von J.K. Rowling. Harry erfährt an seinem elften Geburtstag, dass er ein Zauberer ist. When Leah asks Alexa for who, Alexa knows she's looking for a person. This is to get to the intent. What about Tim? Alexa, what is Harry Potter? Harry Potter is a series of fantasy novels written by British author J.K. Rowling. It's a different answer. Tim asked for what, and Alexa knew he was looking for a thing, in this case, a book. But what happens when it's not obvious what the answer is? Not all questions have an objective answer. What if Leah wants to find the best espresso around? Hey Siri, wo gibt es den besten Espresso in meiner Nähe? Okay, schau mal. Die Espresso Bar sieht gut aus. Da gehe ich jetzt hin. Hey Siri, what shop has the best espresso near me? Okay, here's what I found. Great, I'm going to go to the espresso bar. Tim and Leah both walk into the exact same espresso bar at the exact same time, and Tim immediately notices that bombshell Leah. Wow, she's really beautiful. I wonder if I should make a move. He musters up the courage and starts to walk on over to her, but things don't go as planned. Oh, dang it. Siri, why'd you have to recommend the espresso bar? That's what my algorithm picked. So sassy, that's Siri. Their algorithm uses a cocktail of distance, relevance, and prominence. Distance is kind of obvious. Prominence is all about reviews, the number of reviews you have, the average rating of those reviews, and how recent they are. The third layer, the third part of the algorithm is relevance, and that's where the third part of an intelligence service, knowledge, comes in. Now remember, Leah's got friends in London, and they've just arrived in town for the Metallica concert, but she needs to find them a hotel, and they use up a ton of bandwidth, so she wants to find a hotel that has free Wi-Fi. Ich google nach Hotel in Hamburg mit gratis Wi-Fi. Cool, das Hotel Atlantic sieht gut aus. Das buche ich. Now take a look at this listing. It has all kinds of things on it. It has attributes like an indoor pool, free Wi-Fi. It knows that there's parking. These are really important attributes for unbranded queries. In order for Google to know that the Hotel Atlantic is a relevant result to show for someone looking for free Wi-Fi, Google needs to know that the Hotel Atlantic has free Wi-Fi. Tim also needs a hotel. But the thing about Tim is he brought his dog from America, so he needs a hotel that is pet-friendly. All right, I'm going to Google a pet-friendly hotel in Hamburg. All right, great. The Atlantic Hotel will fit. Tim walks into the Atlantic Hotel, but check this out. If you look at this listing before he goes in, you see all of these different attributes. All of this information and more is contained in the Google Knowledge Graph. It's a brain-like database that contains everything Google knows about the world and how it is connected. It's made up of things, not strings. And so now Tim walks into the hotel and he sees Leah again. There she is again. I think this time I'm going to try and talk to her. Oh, mein Taxi ist da. Ich freue mich schon auf das Metallica Konzert. Siri, was ist meine Ticketnummer? Reihe B, Sitz 45. Structured knowledge is at the foundation of every intelligent service. Together, UI, AI, and knowledge make up the three layers of an intelligent service. This rise, this move towards intelligence in an AI future, it is inevitable. Last year at Yext, we powered billions of bottom of the funnel customer actions for our customers on intelligent services like Google Maps. These stats are stunning. And so the question is, what can you do, all of you as online marketing rock stars, to take advantage of this intelligent future? Well, I recommend Digital Knowledge Management, DKM. First, centralize your company's digital knowledge. That means organize it, go deep. All the people, places, locations, products, menus, restaurants, create a schema for this and get all the attributes right, because the deeper you go, that's how you rank in unbranded queries. 
Second, it's not enough to just put your text up on the web anymore and hope that a search engine will show up, crawl it, and improperly interpret it. Search engines don't crawl every web page every day, and they often don't interpret the details correctly. Successful brands take control by pushing their information out into the world via a knowledge network. And third, put someone in your company in charge of digital knowledge management, a digital knowledge manager. This is a person who is responsible for finding and organizing and maintaining your company's deep digital knowledge everywhere. Now, the rise of AI-powered services and AI means incredible new experiences and powerful new features, but they have their limits too. Tim has overslept and he's running late for the Metallica concert that he so longed to attend, and he's jolted awake. Oh no, I'm late for the concert. He quickly rushes to get dressed, he jumps out of bed, and he books a taxi, and he goes to the concert. Hey Siri, what's my ticket number? Row B, seat 46. Oh my god, it's the girl from the uh, coffee shop. Oh god, is this the Jeep from the coffee shop? Hi, I'm Tim. I'm American. I voted for Trump. <laughs> Even the most powerful AI in the world cannot prevent a stupid pickup line. <laughs> for more than in the past 10 years, we have seen extraordinary innovation in UI and AI. We've seen the launch of personal assistants, Siri, Alexa, Google. We've seen the rise of voice search. We've seen the rise of ride-sharing apps, Uber, Lyft, my taxi. You've seen photo-sharing apps, Instagram, Snapchat. We've seen the launch of an application ecosystem in a mobile device, the launch of the Google Maps app, and we've seen the launch of the iPhone. The world has seen tremendous innovation in the UI layer and the AI layer of an intelligent service over the past decade. But the need, the quest for perfect knowledge, knowledge about your brand has remained the same. No company can control the UI or AI of the future, but every company can control what these intelligent services say about them with digital knowledge management. Thank you all. <laughs>